Oglądajcie Poli Studio. Poli Studio! Świąteczna atmosfera w naszych domach. Życzliwość najbliższych i przyjaciół. Polska Credit Union Świętego Stanisława Świętego Kazimierza pomoże Ci sprawić im radość i zachować pogodny nastrój. Pożyczka świąteczna w wysokości do 5 tysięcy dolarów z oprocentowaniem tylko 4,99%. Spłata w terminie 12 lub 18 miesięcy. Skorzystaj już dziś z tej wyjątkowej oferty. Czas świąteczny mija szybko. Więcej informacji w oddziałach lub w call center. Chcesz uwolnić się od myśli? Spakuj i wyślij. Każda przesyłka z Piastem idzie szybko. Szybciej. I najszybciej. W ciągu czterech dni do rąk odbiorcy. Polska Credit Union Świętego Stanisława i Świętego Kazimierza oferuje nowy serwis finansowy. Błyskawiczne przesyłki pieniędzy do Polski i innych krajów świata za pośrednictwem firmy Western Union. Pieniądze wysyłane w oddziale Credit Union można odebrać tego samego dnia, a nawet już w kilka minut po wysłaniu w wybranym punkcie agencyjnym Western Union w Polsce. Wypłata w dolarach lub złotówkach na życzenie klienta. Zapraszamy do Polskiej Credit Union. Informacje w oddziałach lub w call center. Zapraszamy Państwa do obejrzenia ostatniej części filmu dokumentalnego pod tytułem Lest We Forget For Your Freedom and Ours, zrealizowanego przez studentów St. John's College w Brantford pod kierunkiem prowadzącego zajęcia na Wydziale Multimedialnym Uczelni Sławomira Dobrowolskiego. Narratorem filmu, jak i jednym z prowadzących rozmowy jest Zygmunt Misiak. Dzięki sponsorstwu koła numer 4 SPK Kopie filmu otrzymały wszystkie szkoły Brantford i okolicy, dzięki czemu około 25 tysięcy studentów może zapoznać się z historią Polski okresu wojennego oraz udziału polskich żołnierzy w bitwach na wielu frontach II wojny światowej. Zainteresowani dalszymi szczegółami na temat filmu lub jego nabyciem znajdą informacje na podanej stronie internetowej. Derek Pite was a part of the Canadian Army and fought in D-Day and the liberation of Holland. Juneau Beach where the Canadian forces, British, Polish forces, actually Polish forces landed there too, correct? Oh yes, Juneau yeah, Beach. Yeah. yeah. Polish, I yeah. always, uh, I always was in touch with them, sometimes accidental because they just happened to be where I was. Yeah. But, uh, yes, I, I saw Poles yeah. all the way from, uh, all the way from Normandy right up into Germany. Yeah, Mike, yeah. you're on the beach. I mean, there it is. There, 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 there's, there's probably your worst nightmare in terms of here we, here we go. This is do or die. If the Allies had been pushed back, uh, the world would be a different place now. Um, you know the thing, I got to put mm -hmm. this in. Yeah, absolutely. The thing that has always marveled to me is that it was capable for us to train soldiers with that attitude. Canadian boys weren't trained to to go through life and kill and, and, and maim. Right. But that particular job turned them into killers. And, yeah. And uh, they uh, that that's the attitude it was that they're that those guys are not ever going to push us back into mm -hmm. the sea. Mm -hmm. Whatever it takes, we're going to stay here. Mm -hmm. And that was her attitude. But Do you remember where you were when the announcement basically came and said it's done? Yes. And and I was sleeping in the grass on the Oldenburg Canal. The Poles, along with their Canadian comrades, attacked on August 12th. They fought a fierce battle for days without rest. As a result, they blocked the advancement of two battle-hardened German SS corps. 
This is perhaps the bloodiest battle in front of the Polish fighters. When the Battle of the Flay Gap was over, German resistance in France began to crumble. After a brilliant victory at the Flay Gap, the Polish 1st Armored Division continued its advancement through Normandy, eventually pushing into the Low Countries. Driving the Germans back through Holland and Belgium, the Poles took part in the liquidation of the German bridgehead at the region of Skadla. For the next three months, the Poles took part in a hard-fought campaign in Holland, eventually culminating in the victorious attack at Muldik. So the C-47, so this is the, this is the type of plane that you, that you flew? Yeah, most of the time. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it would be a, a transport for uh, supplies, and then of course... It's paratroopers and paratroopers. tow and gliders. Yeah. The horse or glider was as big as the, the, as the aircraft. Mm -hmm. And how many, now there, there are the gliders that, were, that you were towing in uh, during D-Day, and then also at Arnhem? Yeah, uh, you were talking. How many how many uh, um, soldiers would fit in a glider? I, between twenty and twenty five, mm -hmm. and I understand the glider pilot. He took he was in charge of the group after they landed. Oh, I, see. I guess he is more thoroughly trained than the rest. Yeah, but they had a he flew Tagger Moss to learn how to fly a glider. They they took part of a. Uh, a pilot's a, a normal pilot's course. Yeah. Like I flew Tiger Moth down at Windsor yeah. before I came to Brantford. Wow. So uh, that Polish guy, I wish I got his name. And that's the fellow that you met uh, this year a at, uh, in, in, Toronto. in Toronto. And yeah. uh, and you say that he was... Um, uh, now... And that's something I didn't know. They landed before midnight June the 5th. Because I went over and introduced myself and that the first thing he said Boy, he said, were we ever glad to see those paratroopers come in at midnight? Mm -hmm. oh because apparently they they were getting uh, squeezed a bit. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and I I'm sure that's right. He probably is in the landing field that we dropped our paratroopers because he said he was behind Benny Surmere. Yeah. And that's what, what we went over Benny Surmere to to go inland to drop the paratroopers. Richard, these are the these are the two uh, the two young boys from Arnhem. Yeah. You know. Jack and Ray met with Richard Vidovchik for one of the very first times, having a very strong and emotional conversation with each other. Richard, having been a Polish paratrooper in Holland, was seen by the brothers from their home. And because of this, the brothers had enormous respect for Richard. Richard represents to us every British paratrooper that dropped in Arnhem and every Polish paratrooper that dropped in Arnhem. It's all wrapped up in this yeah. one man. All wrapped up in yeah. this one man. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we found him after, yeah. what, 55 years or yeah. 60 years? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing in itself. Yeah. yeah. But just a little story in the Brantford Expositor, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sure. yeah. I was a little nervous about getting on the phone because I thought, well, what's this Polish guy going to think? Who is this on the phone? <laughs> and I remember when I called Richard Ferdinand, he said, who is this? I said, yeah. well... Uh, I'm, I'm an old survivor <laughs> of Operation Market Garden. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, sometimes in Brantford we live here and we figure that we're, you know, we don't have relevance or history, and right. and yet we have it. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, it's like people parachuted all over the world today, yeah. and in the small yeah. communities, and that's oh, yeah. 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 pretty frightening. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I, I remember the spot, because yeah. we were playing outside. The alarm had gone off, but the alarm went off every day. Mm -hmm. So, Paris. and all of a sudden, the, the bombs were in, dropped. In August, in Holland, the schools, the elementary schools and high schools, the month of August is when we had holidays. During the month of August, I remember spending days and days at the bottom of the bridge, we before went up the bridge, and when the whole day, for days in a row, the Germans were retreating. Mm -hmm. And they had horse and buggies, and they had bicycles, uh, they had old cars, they had old battered tanks, and they had all things. And they just, we used to sit there for a whole day with amazement, watch mm -hmm. them all retreating, you know. And that was one of the reasons why they made the drastic mistake that they said, well, they're all retreating, they're all heading back to Germany, there'd be nothing to fight for in Ireland. The parachute, the parachuting, um, now you're, you're loading onto the planes, and they, they tell you where you're going to be dropping? Oh, yes, we know. Okay. We'll go by the at the table, okay. main table, where everything was going to be. Yeah. But that was useless because they changed everything when we were already in the in air. air. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Now you felt, did you feel also that you're going to drop into an area that there, w there was going to be some fighting, but you figured Germans are moving out? Yeah, they yeah. told us they move out because yeah. they were moving partly. But they're just moving to one part, and, yeah. you know, and that's why you get beat up there because they were right there and waiting the game. Yeah. <laughs> so, if only the boys were able to get a message out to the Allies. They regularly bicycled throughout the area and saw an enormous concentration of German armor and troops hidden in the forest. Not all of them had retreated yet. The objective of the Warsaw Uprising in 1944 was to accelerate the defeat of the Germans. Warsaw's defenders had ammunition only for seven days. Stalin promised that the Red Army would attack the Germans if the Warsaw Uprising lasted for at least six days. In the end, the uprising continued for 63 days, but the promised Russian support never came. The Soviets were not interested in helping the Poles, whom they considered ideological enemies. Instead, the Russians stood by on the other side of the Vistula and watched the Germans obliterate Warsaw. Severely under-equipped, the Warsaw garrisons fought for two months. More than 20,000 Polish soldiers were killed, and hundreds of thousands of civilians were murdered by the Germans during the uprising or shipped off to Auschwitz after the garrison surrendered. My name is Marian Kowalczykowski, and I was the member of the 1st Polish Army, 4th Division, 12th Regiment, 9th Company. And I was to be a part of liberate, liberation of Poland. It is Sukas, you know, there's a diving plane going right down and through the, all the bombs. But luckily I wasn't, you know, hit and everything. So that's mm -hmm. the, in 1942 I was in the Polish Home Army. 1944 the Russian Front came in, we liberated the city of Lwów. And then they after say, okay, your partisan days are over. That was a Russian colonel. He said, over, now you're going to join the Polish army. And so I was taken right into the army. I was, we marched from Lviv, from that city, up to Lublin on the 10th of January. We had the order to go across the river Vistula on the German line because, you know, Germans had the bunkers on one side. We have our trenches on the other side of the river. But since that river was completely frozen, and by 10 o'clock in the morning, the green rackets bursted, and that was a sign to run across the river. After very small, you know, support from artillery, we ran up to the river and there was no shooting, no shooting, no nothing from the German side until we hit the middle of the river. And when the, we hit the middle of the river, then they get the machine guns. One after another one. It's only one company was, you know, going across. It's about 86 men we have in our company, plus the Russians have a, in their one platoon of the heavy machine guns. But that was nothing. Mm -hmm. So finally, when they start to open the fire, then I just drop to the ice and stay put. So after about 10 minutes, it was all over. No shooting, no nothing, but lots of bodies laying down on the ice. Me too. So I was on the ice at, at that time, the temperature, that was January. So you can imagine Poland was yeah. cold. So, but I didn't move at all, because anybody who moved, who was wounded, uh, moved. Then the German snipers, after the attack, from the company of 86, only 23 were left. So all the rest, you know, was shut down. There was no German inside, just half a corpse, half a leg, half a... <laughs> that was a really big one. Did you ever end up going back to your home in Lvov? 
No. I, you see, what I come to Germany after the war, I come to Germany, you know, through the Soviet, you know, patrols and everything, because it was Soviet zone, American zone, English, French, and so on. So I knew because I was in the Polish Home Army. You see, they didn't like that. They took all, made the appointment with the all officers who were in the Polish Home Army, took them to Russia for, like, meeting. They never come back. There were more than 2,000 camps and subcamps on Polish territory in which perished Jewish, Catholic, and Orthodox Poles, Jews from other countries and victims from other nationalities in Nazi-conquered Europe. Small children, elders, the weak and the ill were immediately murdered as not useful for work. Disturbingly, the Nazi program of extermination was not just the work of a small gang of criminal bigots. A number of ordinary Germans, as well as people of other origins, aided Nazis in committing these crimes. Germany was not the only nation that was involved in crimes against humanity in Europe during the Second World War, which were carried out on large scale. At the beginning of 1943, German units participating in the invasion of Soviet Union uncovered a mass grave near the village of Katyn. Further investigation proved that this was the final resting place of more than 4,500 Polish officers imprisoned by the Soviets in September 1939 and murdered by the NKVD the following year. The officers found at Katyn were only part of the much larger group of 15,000 military and professional men who disappeared after they were, they were taken prisoner by the Soviets in 1939. What would, what would you, you know, people that are going to be listening to this in the fall and, and for the next 10, 15, 20, 50 years, what would you say to them in terms of um, how they should remember when all our vets are finally gone, but how they should remember now with them alive and, and what it means to you and what they should, the young ones should remember from the wars, all well, the wars. Well, the mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers should be teaching their sons and daughters and their grandchildren. They should, when I say teaching, they should be talking about it to them at, at the dinner table or when they're sitting around on a Sunday evening or a Saturday night. And they should be telling them all about this because a lot of, a lot of it is, is going to be forgotten. It'll, yeah. it'll be forgotten. And, and, the, and the reason for it to be remembered, it's not so much the battles that took place, but isn't it the the soldiers that fought, the families that right. were there that Please. suffered losses, right. right, and here that suffered losses. Right, yeah. and don't forget, we have what we have today all because of how they suffered. Yeah. Only because of how they suffered, yeah. we have what we have today. Because it could have been a different world had we not overcome Germany yeah. and her allies. Yeah. It would have been a different world completely. We wouldn't be sitting here right now, you and I, talking. Absolutely. Definitely wouldn't be. Do you remember um, in Europe, too, when you were walking through some of the cemeteries, the ages of some of the soldiers that died, how young they were? Yeah, so some were 18, 19. I, yeah. I, I was, when I was in Holland, I, I was at the cemetery. And, and <clears throat> now that I mention Holland, I want to tell you, I don't know if you're aware of it, but it's the school children they take three times a year to the cemeteries to clean the cemeteries to rake them up and pick up all the pieces of leaves and branches and it's the school children that's how they teach their children yeah. to never forget three times a year they take them wow. and when they find out you're a canadian in holland wow you have more invitations to come to homes for dinners and things like that it's yeah. incredible